Hey, it's Sam again, and today I'm back in zone after yesterday's trip to Bodyworks. So if you check out the video from yesterday, that's a whole tour of Bodyworks, my other regular gym. But I'm back in zone today, and it's shoulders again. So as always with shoulders, going to focus on the deltoids, specifically the side and rear delts. Isolations a little bit later, starting on the pressing, but today, different exercise, always trying to do different exercises. And today's different exercise is the hammer strength isolateral behind the neck press, which is just next to me here. Particularly good exercise for putting a little bit more emphasis on the side and rear delts in that overhead pressing movement. So I'm excited for this, haven't used this machine in a while, hoping to get two plates on each side. Not my strong point shoulders, but it can only get better from here. I'm going to warm up and let's get on with it. So I've set up with just one plate on each side, and this is really not much weight, something for me to gauge how I'm getting on with this exercise, as I haven't used it for quite a lot of weeks, probably several months. This, this piece of kit has been out of order here before. So if you're coming back to an exercise or an angle or movement you haven't done for ages, it is advisable to go light on the first set and get a feel for where you can go from there. But my hope is to get two plates on each side for this session and this set here should be an indicator of whether that's likely or not or where, where I can proceed into set two. That's absolutely fine, but better safe than sorry. I'm going to go straight ahead to two plates each side now. Yeah, that's going to be more like it. Get in for set two, get a good grip. Honestly, I'm pretty happy with that. That was easier than expected. So I'm going to go ahead and stick an extra five on each side and aim for eight, nine reps. But as always, as many as I can manage, go to failure on every proper set there. And then we'll look at something else overhead pressing if possible, but it's getting busy. What you should see from this angle is I'm going to lean in ever so slightly to the left side to get started as I'm slightly weaker on the left. So getting it from the starting position, give myself a little bit of help like this on the left side. Now I should be able to get into the set normally. So I like hands quite, quite a wide grip. I feel that that takes the elbow extension out of the movement a little bit which takes the roll of the triceps out which puts more emphasis on the deltoids as well so that's the kind of grip that I go for and here goes all right that'll do for this exercise but that I got that with the 20s well two 20s on each side was what I was hoping for and then I've done a little bit more so that's a success for today I'm going to see if there's room to do some more overhead pressing a more standard movement before getting on to all these deltoid isolations side laterals rear delts machine or, or dumbbells depending on where there's space I'm always trying to adapt to what's available at the time that I'm in the gym just to get it done without waiting around all night. Next up I'm going to hit the seated military press. So this is a free weight exercise for the barbell and again I'm taking it a little bit steady. It's been a while since I've done this specific exercise and shoulders not a strong point. I've had some struggles there so 
It's one plate on each side to start with and I'm, I anticipate keeping it there. It's an exercise that is a little bit of variety from what I've just done though, as on this one the emphasis is not so much on the side and rear delts, it's more on the anterior deltoid as I'm going to press to the front. But some people do behind the neck press with this exercise, but that's not something that I would do without a spotter standing on this platform behind me to help out. So working on my own today, I've used that machine for the emphasis on side and rear delts, and this will be more the side and the front. again. well and truly done on there and we can get cracking with some of the isolation moves which should be a little bit less strenuous so I'm going to start the isolations on delts with side lateral stuff and as I did the machine last time I'm going to look at dumbbells this time just for variety really but I do particularly like the machine because you get that resistance all the way through whereas with the dumbbells you're only working against gravity once you've got through half the rep and you're up here sort of thing so it is, you know, it's pros and cons either way, because while that's a disadvantage with dumbbells, one of the advantages is it's really, really easy to do drop sets, or like all the way down the rack drop sets, which I love doing. So, I'm going to go back to dumbbells today, like I was doing at the chapel, and that'll be keeping things all in rotation and showing both. So I've just been looking for a spot to not get in people's way too much. I think we're, I think we're coast clear now. I can pick these up. So starting with the 55 pound dumbbells, fairly heavy for lateral races. Set one now. Brandon Curry up here. I feel like he gets kind of gets a load of shit unnecessarily. I would say he's indisputably the best person that turned up the year that he won. So it's so it's fair. Really good. He won it fair and square. He made an awful lot of progress, like quite late on into his career. But I didn't manage to meet him, unfortunately. He came here and signed that one. We've got a few of the murals here at Zone signed by bodybuilders including Mr. Olympias, got Sean Roden, and Ronnie Coleman, and we've got Derek Lunsford visiting in about a month or so, so I'm going to come down for that and hopefully get an interview. Set two then. Oh, 
Oh. Obviously, it's going to be easier than my pressing, but it's making me very out of breath. Set three. finish I'm gonna hit up a drop set as I was referring to earlier. Be a missed opportunity not to do that while I'm working on dumbbells and just identifying what's gonna be a sensible increment to drop down by. If I take this one here I can go from 55s to 40s to 25s and that should be about right. Oh, I'm losing reps even before the drop set. I'm definitely getting, getting fatigued. Oh. and find something else to do on belts. Something else isolating. Possibly even skip straight ahead to rear delts. Always depends what's free as I like to keep the workout moving, stay warm, get it done in a sensible amount of time so that the commitment of going to the gym almost every day isn't so onerous in how much time it's taking out of my day. That's another the thing I'd recommend about having a good repertoire of exercises that can be switched in and out is you're more versatile to just get on with it when the place is busy and you want to keep within a certain time so often in writing a plan for someone I'll include interchangeables or optionals things can be roughly equivalent to each other switched in and out depending on how you feel and what's available the Panata machine is free, so I'm going to move straight on to rear delts. So this is the chest fly and rear delt combo, and I've yet to use the rear delt side of this machine as much as I've loved it for chest, so I'm going to take that opportunity now. It's an exercise you go fairly light on. You can try as best you can to isolate the rear, di rear delts without squeezing your shoulder blades together, which kind of exercises your trapezius a little more. So try and stay wide. Think of staying wide like that, so not pinching your back together and just doing it all with your shoulders. there I can go one notch higher but this is really lightweight to work for some rear delts so it's only 25 there that I'm putting it up to and this is perfectly adequate if I'm not swinging it I'm not pinching my shoulder blades together using all the rest of those muscles in the mid back it's quite enough for just that part of the deltoids and that really burns actually with it being the last exercise and putting a bit more focus on on rear delts with uh, 
my behind the neck press machine I started on and actually leaning forward slightly with my lateral raises which brings in that area as well. They're already pretty knackered and this will be a decent finish for the rear belts. I'm actually feeling it more in the rear belts than I was that previous machine from last time where I was lying down. I think it's because I got too used to that thing and it built up to lifting quite heavy and it's uh, just not the same same kind of novel stimulus so I can see myself switching to this thing when available quite often now. It's set to in the back but it'll be worth it got plenty of other exercises that I can do for back that's for sure well I get a little bit sociable with you here for my last set and then we're done for this workout and I'll round it up and address some of your questions and finish off the video That's it for today, another good session done on this road to 300 pounds. My weight has been stable for nearly a week, but the lifts are going up and I actually got more there on some of the first X, well, particularly that behind the neck press was a little bit, a little bit more successful than I was expecting. So that's all good progress. I'm happy with this session and it's most likely gonna be arms tomorrow. I just thought I'd wrap up the video with addressing a couple of questions that have come in lately as part of a workout video as these tend to you know get more attention than my separate q a videos i thought why not combine them so first question i've had lately is when can you double up a muscle group for a week so train it more than once a week in a lot of programs it is more than once a week anyway like if you did upper lower upper lower or there's certain crossover in other systems but a lot of systems are like a body part split where it's once a week and my general rule of thumb on this is that like your strength, like your appetite, like all other factors involved in this process, your recovery ability can change as well. It can improve. It can develop. So you'll know when you're ready. Say you start on training a body part split and it's everything once a week and you kind of stall in progress but you find you're not exhausted either. That would be an indicator that you could try for a couple of the easier muscle groups to double them up in, into the week so you could replan it like that. It's also dependent on which exercises you've got in the selection as the more demanding ones, say deadlifts and squats and T-bar rows like the landmine T-bar rows, that kind of thing, barbell rows even, can be more taxing in general. So if you've got heavy emphasis on those kind of lifts it might take a little bit longer to start doubling things up, but even in that situation, doubling up sessions on arms would be possible. Generally, the bigger muscle groups that carry the heaviest weight to train properly, like your legs and your back, take more time to recover, and are gonna be harder to put in more than once a week. But muscle groups that 
use less weight to exercise them properly, like your arms, like your shoulders, even your chest compared to legs and back can be attempted to be done twice a week as you transition over to everything twice a week. Those ones can be attempted first. So I'd say it's basically dependent on your ability, how things are going at the moment and can be phased in rather than a quick switch to everything twice a week. So that's, that's my perspective on that. Another question that's come in lately is when are foods interchangeable? So in something sort of in between a meal plan and a, and a macro based, calories based, flexible plan, when can you sort of go from a fixed meal plan to swapping certain things? When are they going to be equivalent or how can they be equivalent by calories and macronutrients? When can they be swapped? I'd say they're never strictly equivalent as there's so many different compounds in all the different foods that they're never exactly the same. So they're never exactly equivalent, but they could be functionally equivalent and you're not able to tell the difference in a lot of cases. Those cases tend to be when the foods are both whole, you know, so the existing food and the food that you intend to swap in are both whole foods and they're both of the same food group. So say one kind of lean fish for another kind of lean fish, so like cod for haddock or cod for tuna or like sea bass for sea bream or something like that that's when when they're roughly macro equivalent uh, by weight or proportionately fat and protein and they're of the same food group that's when they're pretty much interchangeable so that would that would apply for that kind of situation it would also apply for kind of top side and silver side if you're talking beef but <laughs> my reservation with all this is usually the things that are most closely interchangeable taste really similar and are very similar so it's not really the change that someone's looking to make they usually want to change something much more different and that's when you can't guarantee that they're going to be interchangeable you can only change one or two things at a time and see how you get on so it always comes back to baselining and tracking results with uh, your photos your videos your weight your tape measurements your skin fog calipers all that kind of stuff that i monitor and uh, keep in a plan as i adjust week by week so that's that's my perspective on that one when it comes to nutrition and interchangeables and i prefer especially when it's a pre-contest kind of situation to be on a very set diet and only change one thing at a time and uh, and that's how i deal with that so those are a couple of questions quickly covered today to round out the video and i just thought i'd film it here so i could show you the uh, the advert for the visit. So Derek Lunsford's coming down. And we've got, uh, what date is it? Tuesday the 20th of February. So I will try and, uh, I'll try and get a few questions in there. I do want to know exactly what his back routine has been over the years, because his back is ridiculous. I mean, I've watched his training videos lately, so I know what he's been doing more lately, but I'd love to know what he's been, what he's been training on most frequently and attributes most of that development to over the years. So there's, there's that to look forward to um, in the coming weeks and in between now and then. If you've got any questions you'd like to see featured in the video, pop them in the comments. I do respond to all the comments, so any, anything you've got to say, just pop it in there. And if you like the videos, please subscribe and share. And I'll pick up any questions for next time and continue with the workouts and exercise demonstrations. Have a good week. Cheers.